Hi, this is Dr. Anna Maria Helt, herbalist and microbiologist here with Basmati.com. My third attempt at recording on our Herb of the Week service berry because both Milo and Finch decided to make lots and lots of noise for the first two. So take three. So service berry. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, Juneberry is another name for this, Saskatoon is a pretty well-known name for serviceberry, Shadberry, uh, and lots of other common names for this plant. The botanical name is Amalanke, uh, and it's a hard one to say, A-M-E-L-A-N-C-H-I-E-R. So say that five times fast. And there are many species found throughout almost all of North America, including way up into Canada, their species in Asia and elsewhere in the world. And so this is a shrub or a small tree in the rose family. And as such, it has those characteristic five petal blossoms. In the case of service berry, those petals tend to be white to pink. And you may be thinking five petals for rose. Uh, and when you look at commercial roses, such as what you would get in the store, uh, yeah, they have more than five petals, but they've been bred that way as ornamentals or for scent. But in the wild, most of the time, what you're going to see with anything in the rose family are five-petaled flowers. It's one of the ways you can maybe guess that you're looking at something that's in the rose family. Now, this plant is not one you're going to see talked about in many modern herb books at this point, but it used to have heavy usage in North America, um, in various cultures, various indigenous groups, uh, and various parts of the plant were used medicinally. For instance, the bark used to be used uh, right after birth to help the woman expel the placenta. Uh, and at the other end of the spectrum, the roots were actually used for miscarriage prevention. So here, one part of the plant was used to activate uterine contractions, and another part of the same plant seemed to be used to perhaps inhibit them. But again, you don't see many uses of the plants, the plant now uh, beyond its fruit. And so this is one of the reasons service berry is, is well known and loved now is its fruits. And so they're small, uh, about the size of small blueberries. And in fact, they kind of look like blueberries, dark purplish blue. And uh, historically speaking, service berries were a very important food source uh, for indigenous folks throughout North America, as well as elsewhere in the world. So they're really nutritious. Service berries have a lot of iron in them for a fruit, especially magnesium, calcium, very high in calcium, in fact, potassium and copper. Service berries are also very uh, high in polyphenols, and there are various categories of polyphenols or polyphenols. You might have heard of bioflavonoids or flavonoids and um, other pigments like anthocyanins. And so service berries, because of their purple color, are very rich in anthocyanins. And so these are antioxidant pigments, anti-inflammatory pigments. In fact, there's been a little bit of petri dish type research showing that service berries have antioxidant effects and that's maybe not a big surprise pretty much any berry with a pigment has antioxidant effects um, assuming that that berry doesn't make you sick first uh, and so um, let's see what else do i want to talk about and so uh, service berries also have quercetin in them so you can maybe save a little money and grow your own service berries rather than buying expensive quercetin supplements they also have various carotenes in them as well. So nutritional powerhouses. And though we don't hear much in modern times so much about medicinal use of service berries, really any berry that's going to be rich in pigments and as nutrition as service berries is gonna have health benefits. And so for instance, using dark berries for things like better eyesight because those anthocyanins and other dark pigments are really good support for those very delicate blood vessels, those tiniest of capillaries that we have in our eyes, whose degeneration can lead to poor vision. We have tiny capillaries in other parts of the body, such as the kidneys, that these berries with their pigments likely benefit. And so I like dark berries in general for cardiovascular health, for strengthening and improving the integrity of the blood vessels. And that would be one thing I would perhaps try service berries for. Um, and if, again, for things like vision, especially if you have things like poor night vision. 
Now, tr uh, traditionally speaking here in North America, the juice of these berries used to be used as a mild, safe laxative. And it, that juice was also used uh, for stomach upset um, in children and also to stimulate an appetite in children who aren't wanting to eat. And um, this was found in various parts. These uses were found in various parts of North America. Uh, the berries are ingestible, they're edible, whether they're raw or they're cooked. And some very popular ways to use the berries is fermenting them and making a berry wine. They're great dried. They're great um, as preserves or canned for the winter. Um, sauces and things like that. Um, pretty much anything that you would use other berries for, you can use service berries for. Now, going back to medicine, uh, the juice of the berries was also used <clears throat> The immature, I should say the juice of the immature berries used to be used as eye drops um, in the Blackfoot culture and also the boiled juice used to be used as ear drops for earaches as well. And again, you don't hear much about those uses anymore, but if you have an earache, give it a try. See what happens. Um, and I think I will leave it at that. It's a very common shrub. Um, grows at sea level, grows at higher elevations, and so look around uh, in your area and see if you can find some growing in the wild. And if not, it's an easy one to grow in the garden, so you can go buy it for yourself. And until next time, be well.